Hello friends, welcome again to God's Eagle Ministries. My name is Ambassador Mande Oji Ogojo Ogbe. At God's Eagle Ministries, we are seeding the nations with God's word and God himself is transforming lives through his timeless truth, one content at a time. We're one in Christ Jesus, let's say one. Evangelism, discipleship, uh, counseling, prayer, um, healing, deliverance, and restoration without, and prayer without wars, borders, and denomination. Uh, today we bring you our series, equipping series on prayer. And the course of the uh, series, uh, we've looked at a number of uh, topics, but uh, the most critical reason for prayer is that Jesus himself is a classical example of prayer uh, for all the sins. And um, we, it's also, he also said in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, that men always ought to pray and not faint. In these times and seasons where uh, we, there's runaway inflation, inflation all over the world, there are a lot of uh, phenomena that are unexplainable uh, based on the textbooks or uh, the climate issues that we have. It is, impossible, it is important for us to engage with our Heavenly Father to gain clarity, to gain strength, to be able to go through tough, troubled times. And uh, in the course of this uh, uh, equipping series on prayer, we have looked at uh, the first one, we looked at 30 reasons for prayer. 30 reasons for prayer. They are on our YouTube channel and also the podcast and on our website. You can avail yourself of those content. But we started with 30 reasons uh, for prayer. We looked at 10 hindrances to prayer. We looked at 30 reasons for unanswered prayer. We looked at six kinds of prayer. We looked at six pray ways to pray. Uh, we looked at 20 reasons for fasting. And then we began uh, the prayer session with for a prayer of forgiveness and uh, repentance. And then we stepped a little bit further and we mentioned the fact that before you begin to go into prayer, you need to present uh, yourself uh, as clear as possible. That's why we took the prayer on repentance, how to go about repentance and, uh, and um, uh, forgiveness of sin. And then we also uh, looked at um, uh, the prayer of consecration. The Lord says we are kings and priests unto our God. It's not a, 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 a it's, it's not um, for a particular class of people. Once you're a saint, you're a priest and a king. You're consecrated for the work of the Lord. It doesn't matter whether you are a bank MD or a CEO of a company or you're uh, uh, somebody who has uh, in the house uh, running over the affairs of your home. Uh, your your neighborhood doing things that uh, honor the Lord in that environment. You are a priest and a king, uh, priests inter intervening in the place of prayer for others, uh, superintending and calling for God's kingdom and God's rule in the affairs of life. In the seven realms that we have looked at uh, quite uh, intensely, in uh, as we looked at self, we looked at. Um, uh, families. We looked at uh, the uh, the community we live in or the neighborhood. Uh, we looked at uh, the state where we live in. We looked at the church. We looked at the country or the nation, and then we looked at the nations of the world. God and, and, and His expectation is for us to leave the four walls where we gather to get equipped and go into the four walls of the world and. Uh, become priests and kings unto our God, bringing God's kingdom and God's rule into all those realms, all those realms, okay? And so that is the assignment that we've been given. And so um, then we went further to pray concerning the prayer of revival. We need revival in our lives. We need to change. We need to make a U-turn. Uh, there's, there's room for growth in our work with God. And that's where revival comes in, where we realize that we were not where we were when we started or some of us have not even started. That means that there's a need uh, to call upon the Lord and turn away from the paths and the ways that we have been. But today we want to look at four critical daily steps that will help enhance your prayer. It's important to lay this foundation. If the foundation is wrong, then your prayers will, um, uh, will not uh, elicit 
the divine response that is required. So it is important that we look at these four critical daily steps as we go into the place of prayer. And I'll give you scriptural references uh, that will help you uh, get equipped in moving forward with uh, the prayer with the Lord. We said we're going to be looking at over 1,500 prayer points covering all kinds of areas in, in your life, in yourself, in your community, in all the seven realms that we've talked about. Because we, uh, the Lord says we should pray for our leaders, we should pray for different kind of people. We should pray for the body of Christ. We should pray for unbelievers, you know, to call them into so that their hearts will be open uh, to receive from the Lord. And so we're looking at these four steps, the four steps, the four critical steps that one needs to take every day as you go into the place of prayer. This will revolutionize your prayer life. It will make your prayer life move to another level. So if you miss any other step, I don't want you to miss these four steps. These four steps are so crucial. And the first step essentially is this, number one, that we need to ask the Lord to turn our heart to him. Lord, cause us to turn our hearts to you. Cause us to turn our hearts to you is really crucial because when we go into the place of prayer, our minds run riot. They run all over the place. Uh, sometimes we're thinking about the offense yesterday with our neighbor or with our wife or our, our, our husbands or our children or our sibling. We have issues that are distracting our attention on the Lord. Our heart is meant to love the Lord. That's why the two critical commandments, that that's but the Ten Commandments is broken into two, is love the Lord your God with all what? Your heart, your heart your heart, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Everything that is within you needs to love the Lord and then love your neighbor as yourself. And you know that there's so much distraction around our lives. There's so much going on wrong. Our the health issues, so many things, my financial issues, um, business issues, crisis here and there, relationship issues that tend to uh, cloud our hearts from really opening up in love to the Lord. And so we ask the Lord to help us. That's number one. We ask the Lord to help us turn our heart towards him, turn our, cause our heart to turn towards you in love. Because when our hearts are turned to the Lord, we can't be attentive to one so many things at the same time. We have to point our attention to the Lord. And the Lord, our God is a jealous God. He wants our attention. He wants our full 360 degrees 100% attention when we come to him in the place of prayer. And there's no point going to ask God to heal you and all of that if there's no relationship with him. There's no point bringing people's requests to the Lord if they, your relationship with the Lord is not right. There's no point going out on evangelism if you're not right with the Lord in terms of relationship. And I want to define something here about Christianity. You see, Christianity, we want you to get out of a, uh, uh, what is this? A, a, of religiosity into practical Christianity where you deal with a practical God. Relations, relations, Christianity is about relationships, it's not a religion. It's not your, your building in the church. It's not just you uh, having an affair with yourself and some other Christians. It's about you and God in the secret place. The most greatest growth you're going to have is in the secret place. The greatest engagement you're going to have is in the secret place. The secret place is where you and God stay to discuss, to talk one-on-one. -on -one. And so as you come into that secret place, it's important to ask him because of the distraction and the noise that is going on. Our flesh is making noise. It doesn't want to pray. It doesn't want to fast. Our, our, our relationships are crying out loud. There is fight going on all over the place. There is inflation going on all over the place. There is COVID going on all over the place. And so those things tend to bog us down and fear on trial. So in that kind of situation, we ask the Lord to turn our heart, cause our, our heart to turn to you, cause our heart to turn to you so that we are attentive to what you say. So that's the first one. The second one is um, believe, that we believe in you. We believe in your word. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in your word. I believe in your dealing within me. I believe in your dealing all within my environment. That's number two. Why is that crucial? It's crucial because if you go through the whole of the Bible, God wants to be believed. God wants to be believed by his creation. He doesn't want to force, but he wants to be believed. That's what faith is all about. 
the evidence of things hoped for, the, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And God expects that we come to him believing that he is and is a reward of them who diligently seek him. And so we are affirming, number two, we are affirming, Lord, I believe you. Lord, I believe your word. I believe all that you're doing within me, all that you're doing all around my environment. That is number two. And number three, you ask him to search me, oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. And if there's been any way in me, lead me in part of righteousness. Take away evil thoughts, evil conscience away from me. I confess them. So that's the third part of these four critical uh, daily steps that we need to get into because we are called to the, in Romans chapter 12 to says, be renewed by the uh, coming to the presence, be transformed to this world, but be renewed by the renewal of your heart. That's uh, Romans 12 too. So we need to be renewed daily. We need to be refreshed daily in our relationship with God before we begin to we open our big mouth to ask God for whatever it is that we want. Okay, and then that is, uh, we ask that he search us and, you know, and lead us in the past, clear us of all conscience, plead the blood of Jesus over, over us, because you're standing as priest and king. You're also intervening on behalf of the sin of the people you are bringing. You're standing in their place and that, Lord, we have sinned against you. We've done this. Don't separate yourself from the people you are bringing. And then number four, which is the final one, you are firm that you are now renewed in him. And then you begin to go into the prayer. So this is the first, the last steps that we will take. But we're going to, it's so crucial, these four daily critical steps are so crucial. We're taking the first one now, which has to do with turn our hearts to him. How do you turn your heart when you're trying to focus on God and so many thoughts are running there, the offenses are running all over? The way to go about that is to bring in songs that will uh, help tune you up, thorns, they call it the ministry of the minstrels, the instrumentalists, the choir people, the people who sing songs, the people who minister to the Lord. And so when you begin to sing songs, it turns your attention, your thoughts begin to uh, look upon the Lord. I have a few uh, songs here I've written that can help you tune up uh, to God. And you can look for <coughs> uh, uh, you can look for songs that have to do with the heart, the heart. Uh, one of it I love very much it has to do with um, this. It says, the uh, Spirit of God, do it again, do it again in my life. Open my heart to see Jesus who is seated upon the throne. Holy Ghost, that's the Holy Spirit is within you. Do it again. Do it again in my life. Open my eyes to see Jesus who is seated upon the throne. Savior, 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 hear my humble cry. While sought others thou art calling, do not pass me by. There's so many of them. Uh, there's the other um, has to do with, do it again. Uh, we look at, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. Oh, me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Um, there's this other one. It talks about in Isaiah. Um, uh, this is uh, Hallelujah. Okay, says so uh, uh, Isaiah. Okay, yeah, I got that. It says you are high and lifted up. Oh, there is no one like you. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are high and lifted up. Oh, there is no one like you. Hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so when you begin to do that, your thoughts begin to turn towards Him. 
and your attention begin to focus on him and then before you know it to begin to uh, speak uh, in tongues uh, you begin to speak in tongues and then the spirit in you which is tuned to worshiping God begins to come alive uh, you begin to speak that and then you begin to get separated uh, from uh, the outer court into the holy place and then from the holy place into the holy of holies and then when you get in there the manifest presence comes up now let me give you an example you know in the old testament in deuteronomy if you read through deuteronomy leviticus and all of that god separated uh, three they created three parts in the in, during the ark in the ark of the covenant there's a there's a outer court there's the holy place there's the holy of holies you know that in each of these steps, there are certain people that are supposed to go into, uh, stay in the outer court. There are those who are supposed to go into the holy place. The holy of the, the holy of holies is where the priests are. You are a priest, so you go in there and you engage with God. But to get in there, you need to go through all of these process. So, well, God has broken that barrier and is now bringing us access to be able to go in there without going to a priest. But we are all priests, so now we can go into that place. But our hearts need to be right. It is in that place of turning our heart to Him that He begins to put light on the areas in our lives that need to, to, to be put right. And as we do that, what tends to then happen is that we begin to see him as he is because sin acts as bottlenecks between us and god uh, the thought life if it's filled with all kinds of negativity becomes a stumbling block a, a bottleneck between us and our engagement with the lord and the scripture i want to look at to, for us to look at very closely today is in isaiah uh, chapter 6 verses 1 uh, 2 uh, Isaiah chapter 6, uh, verses 1 to 11. And it reads, and it gives you a picture of how we uh, Isaiah engaged God. In the year that King Uzziah died, means there was crisis going on around Isaiah, because the king died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. That's a picture of the spiritual eyes. When we turn our attention, when we say, Lord, turn our heart to the Lord, our spiritual eyes get open. The spiritual eye is the eye of imagination. The eye of imagination, the imaginative realm is the spiritual realm. Spirit means invisible. And so God gives us our imagination to use it to see him. And so the Holy Spirit uses that realm of imagination to project how God looks like unto us. So, so the eye was opened. So it says, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, not of the physical eye, the spiritual eyes, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twine, twin, he covered his face. And with twin, he covered his feet. And with twin, he did fly. Why is he able to see this? Because his heart had been turned to the Lord. And one cried unto another, said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. That is also a picture of the realm of where God is. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean life, for my eyes are seeing the King, the Lord of hosts. What, what tend to happen in whatever kind of engagement that you have with the Lord? There's always this sense of sin, of doing the wrong thing. God, God, because God is holy, so when it comes, His light shines into darkness. Anything evil is darkness. And we begin to see areas in our lives that are not right. That's where repentance comes in. That's where sincere asking forgiveness comes in. 
It's in the light of God that we begin to see. Because before we begin to engage in it, say, hey, deal with this, deal with this, deal with this. Jesus even alluded to that when he said, if you come to the Lord, bring in an offering, and you know there's an offense between you and your brother, drop whatever you have, go and make peace and come back again. Most of the time, people relate that to giving money or giving things to the Lord. But our worship, our presence to the Lord, our lives is a, it's a worship, it's, a, it's an offering to the Lord. And so when we bring our life before the Lord, we have to come to him clean. And the way that happens is that when we and our hearts are turned to him, immediately we begin to recollect things that are not right and we begin to deal with them. The greatest sincerity, the most sincere sincerity that you can really have is when you look upon the Lord and realize that these areas of the life of your life need to be dealt with. And it's a daily affair. We are going to get offended. We are going to offend others. We are going to do a lot of things that doesn't honor God. In the course of the 24 hours, as long as we are dealing with people, either that's why I say, take heed for yourself. Jesus said, offense will arise. Take heed means be sensitive, be attentive to it. And that's why God did not talk about the person who offended. He said, if they offend you uh, 4,900 times, you have to forgive. As long as they come back to say, we are sorry, forgive them. All right, and so uh, we go on with this engagement so he's able to see that something is wrong because his heart is stunned. Most of the time, our hearts are not turned. We go into the place of prayer, mount all kinds of prayer. Our hearts are not turned. It's all over the place, bouncing here and there, and nothing's communicated. God wants our attention. When he saw Moses, by the by, uh, to get Moses' attention uh, in, in where Moses was in the, in the desert, he allowed a bush to be born in. And Moses ran, and he took attention to the bush. means his heart was turned to what was going on. So that he leaves whatever it is, the, the sheep or uh, the shepherding job, and he's turned over to the Lord. So God wants our attention. And every day, we must give him that attention. One hour, two hours, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, there must be an attention on him. Because it is in the light of him, we see what needs to be put aside. We see what he wants us to do for the day. We see the direction he wants us to go. And so here, we see that Isaiah saw how, how evil he was. And then what happened in the place of prayer when we turned to him? So then, then uh, flew when when he realized that he couldn't handle this God's presence, God's holy presence. He then uh, flew one verse six. Of, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the thorns from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this heart Touch thy lips, and lo, this had touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, thy sin forged. So, in this place, you now ask the, the Spirit, the Lord Jesus, to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness through his precious blood. So, we do all of that in this first engagement where it has been torn and we're realizing we've done the wrong thing. Also, I have heard, I, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said, I here am I, send me. And the Lord said, go and tell these people here, okay? So essentially, when we turn our heart to God, we begin to know what is in his heart, his body that he wants us to carry. He wants us to communicate with him. He wants us to be his instrument here. We are saved to serve. That is the first assignment. We are not saved to be served. We are saved to serve. It's in the context of our serving, that other people serve us. That's all about Christianity. It's about service for others. We are safe to serve. And so when we go into the place of presence, God begins to put burdens on our heart because our hearts are turned to him now. We're able to pick up whatever it is that he wants us to do. We're able to know his plans for our lives. We're able to know the plan for our communities. We're able to know his plans for our government. We're able to know his plans for our nations and the nations of the world. And we're able to communicate. And also that brings content to our prayer. You see, it's one thing to pray. It's another thing to be specific in your prayer. It's, it's, it's not, we ask amiss. Sometimes we don't wait on God to find out how we should pray concerning our, our children who are misled, concerning our children who are misbehaving, concerning our business that's going on more, concerning decisions we want to make. It's in the place of prayer that the Lord brings us. And I talked about um, earlier on, I read uh, the ministry of menstrual, how to worship so that it can help turn our, turn our heart onto the Lord. In the Second Kings uh, chapter 3, there's a very interesting story about Elijah and 
Jehoram, the son of Ahab, the one of the most wicked kings, the son of one of the most wicked kings in Israel. They had, uh, they ran into, there was a, a country that was serving them before rebelled, and Jehoram called uh, Jehoshaphat to go with him to war with the Moabites that have rebelled. And then when they went, got to a point, uh, they didn't have water to drink. And they said they were screaming that the God has led them to be killed. And one person said, look, why don't we go to the prophets? A little bit go to, so Eli, uh, Joseph, Joseph, who fears God, said, well, is there a prophet here we, we can look at? And he said, oh, there was uh, Elisha. And so I just want to read that uh, from uh, Second Kings chapter 3, uh, from verse uh, 8. Uh, when they made a decision, which way shall we go? Uh, and and the verse A says, and he answered, the way through the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went and the king of Judah and the king of Edom, and they fetched a compass of seven days journey. And there was no water for the horse and for the cattle that followed them. And the king of Israel, the sin, uh, said, Alas, that the Lord had uh, called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha, now I need you to note this now from verse 13. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father and to the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord had called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Verse 14, And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee, nor see thee. But now bring me a minstrel, minister of instrument, that worship is, worships God. And it came to pass, when the minstrel played, that the Lord, the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, uh, and he said, thus said the Lord, make this valley full of dishes. Uh, earlier on, I talked about the fact that we need to go into the God's presence with praise and worship because that stirs off our spirit and helps very quickly to turn our heart to the Lord so that he can begin to minister to us. We see an example here, a prophet, before he could speak, asked that an instrument be brought so that a worship can be brought before the Lord and so that that will stir him up and you'll be able to pick up from the Lord. And are we having difficulty hearing the Lord? get into the place of deep worship. I'm not talking of worship that you just mount out because just repeating some uh, uh, platitudes of nothing. And it's one that engages your heart. Songs that you mean. If you start with not meaning it, as you go along, it begins to sit deep into your spirit. And then by the time you know it, God is in your heart. And so that channel, the confusion, your heart turns to the spirit of the living God inside of you, and you begin to pick up vibrations, words that you never heard before. You begin to pray of impulses, you begin to receive corrections from your own life, and that way you can make all the amendments that needs to be made. Praise the Lord, somebody. So this brings us to the first one. I want I don't want to make it uh, very long. And then the next video, we're going to be doing a video on belief, which has the next step. So there are four steps. The second is believe. I believe you affirming your belief in the Lord, affirming uh, your belief in the word, affirming because you are going to pray with the word anyway. You are going to talk to the Lord. So if you are, would you want to believe in? I say we eat the fruit of our word. So I'll come to you now as I go uh, to the second part of this uh, uh, recording. Thank you and God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.